Hello everyone. So I welcome you to the lecture series on practical image processing using OpenCV. And today our topic is per perspective transformation. And this is a very important topic. So first we'll see, we'll discuss what is perspective transformation. And then we'll go for the practical implementation of perspective transformation in OpenCV. So let's start today's class. So first of all, what is perspective transformation? You know, when human eyes see near things, then they look bigger as compared to those who are far away. And this is known as perspective in a general way. When you see means uh, nearby things, then you will see that they are bigger. And when you see those things which are far away, then they look smaller, right? So this is perspective. Then you also know that transformation means the transfer of an object from one state to another. So overall, perspective transformation means what? It is a technique that deals with the conversion of this 3D world into 2D image. Right, so that is the overall meaning or definition of perspective transformation. Now, next thing is that, you know, in perspective transformation, let me first take this one, okay. Okay, in perspective transformation, you can change the perspective of a given image or video for getting better insights about the required information. I mean, first of all, that why do we need perspective transformation in image processing or in video processing? Because with perspective transformation, you may have better insights of a particular uh, reason of that image, which without perspective transformation may not be possible. So in perspective transformation, you have to provide the points on the image from which you want to gather information by changing the perspective, that is the view, right? So you need to provide the points inside which we want to display our image. And also we get the perspective transformation from the two given set of points and wrap it with the original image. Okay. Then, in OpenCV, how we can implement the perspective transformation? That is practical implementation of perspective transformation in OpenCV. Now, for this, what you need a 2T cross 3 transformation matrix. I hope you know that from the last few lectures, you have seen this for the, for the zymotic or geometric transformation of an image, you always need a transformation matrix. Okay, you always need a transformation matrix for geometric transformation of image. So here also in perspective transformation, you need a three cross T transformation matrix. Straight lines will remain straight even after the transformation. And to find this transformation matrix, you need four points on the input image and the corresponding points on the output image. And in these four points, means among these four points, three of them should not be collinear. Remember, okay, out of these four points, three should not be collinear. Then we'll use one function that is CV2 get perspective transform, pers very easy to remember, CV2 dot get perspective transform, get perspective transform. This will be used to find out this transformation pack matrix. Once we will find this transformation matrix as usual, what we'll do, we will use this same CV2 warp perspective function for the Okay, we'll apply this on this three cross three transformation matrix that we have obtained using CV2 get perspective transform. So 
let's know about the syntax in much better way. See, CV2 get perspective transformation. Syntax is CV2 get perspective transform. SRC comma DST, they are the parameter. And what is SRC? SRC coordinates of quadrangle vertices in the source image. And tree should not be collinear, okay? Then DST is what? Coordinates of the corresponding quadrangle vertices in the destination image. Isn't it easy to remember, right? So then CV2 wrap perspective method syntax is CV2 wrap perspective source comma destination comma destination size. So source, you already got that source image DST, that is the output image that has the size, D size, and the same type as source and D size, you already got, that is the size of the output image. So this is about the two functions. Now let's come to the coding portion. You take a screenshot of this so that you can easily implement them. Import CV2 for OpenCV import. Right, import numpy as np for some array based operation, then import matplotlib by plot as plot because we need to plot those images, those output and input images. Then let's take the input image, image cv2 im read function, then the path where your image is located. I'm using lina image, it is lina512 color.tiff. That is being stored in the image data set of the Kajirang University folder of the C Z drive. Then we have obtained the rows and columns information from using this image.shape function. Rows, comma, calls, comma, C H is equal to image.shape. Now this, this is the time of defining those four different points. Right? Points and P points one and points two. Points one and P plot 32. 56, 65, 368, 52, 28, 387, 389, 390. You see, I'm not using some collinear points. Right. Then points two and we float 32, 0, 0, 300, 0, 0, 300, 300, 300. You use different points for better understanding of the concept. Right. Then M to find out that transformation matrix, CV2.cat perspective transforms points one and points two src dst right dst now dst that is the destination image will be obtained using warp perspective cv2 warps perspective image then this is our original image then m that is a transformation matrix then 300 300 right so you see that these size, these size I'm defining here, right? Now is the time to plot these images. So plot, subplot, right? Plot im show image, plot title input, and then plot subplot, plot im show DST, plot title output, plot show. So with this I'm showing, we are plotting actually input and the output images. Now we can go for the what OpenCV implementation portion. So this is the code. You just need to type them in your spider. So I have already opened this spider and I have typed this code. You can see this code. I have already explained. Right. I hope this is this point is clear to you. You may change these points. No problem with that, right? So plot, subplot, one to one, plot image show, plot title input, plot subplot, one to two, two plot image show, DST, plot title output, plot show. So this is the input uh, image and this is the output. Image. Let me show you the implementation phase again. See, uh, you have to understand each code in a clear way, then only you can go for your task of implementing this, uh, your usual image processing applications. So 
right? My suggestion is that always to practice this code, then only this concept will be clear for you. Okay. And you may use this uh, comment section to let me know that whether uh, this concept is clear or not, or any topic that you want more explanation. Okay. So uh, that's it. Uh, let me give a name that it may take time. Okay. Perspective, say one. And then let give the extension. Of course, this is the Python file. So perspective one dot py. I'm giving the file like this, file name like this, right? See now this is running. See, you may see that this run file, this this file is being running. No. Now the code has been run successfully and you will see the output. This is the input image. Right. Let me point this better way. So this is the input image and this is the output image. So I'm concentrating on this region so I can extract more information uh, from here. Or you can say that more clearly or more distinctly you can extract information from this part. Okay, so that's the application part of the perspective transformation. Whenever you want to concentrate on a particular region of that image, okay, in much bigger or in much better way than you may go for applying this. And believe me, you will frequently use this in your image processing applications. So that's it. I hope this, this class is all the concepts that I have discussed and the practical portion also is clear to you. So we'll meet in the next lecture. Till then, take care, bye-bye. And with this, Dr. Dupoy signing off. Thank you, bye-bye.